Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Bunker Hill's monthly series, Journey to Restart. I'm pleased to introduce their CEO, Sam Ash, who's going to be reviewing the latest from Bunker Hill and afterwards taking some of your questions live. Remember that you can submit your questions using the Q&A chat found on the right-hand side of your screen at any time. And as a note, this being a six-series event with your registration and attendance today, you're going to be automatically registered and notified of all future Bunker Hill episodes. As always, this event is being recorded. It's going to be available on 6.com in the coming days. And without further ado, Sam, I'd like to pass things over to you to get us started. Thank you, Cam. And it's uh, great to be here at the start of October to talk about our, our September progress. Uh, this is uh, uh, <clears throat> a little bit of a rehash because we did uh, actually press put out a few press releases in the month of September. But just to uh, just to kind of uh, you know circle back, you know, we did. Uh, publish of the and press release our pre-feasibility study. And to remind everybody, this was exactly what we were uh, expecting to see as far as project economics, strong economics on a low CapEx restart. Uh, but what's important to note is this is just the start. There is still a uh, significant amount of upside with, with resource conversion, and, uh, and we'll be certainly looking to extend and improve those economics uh, as we move forward. As part of that uh, pre-feasibility, uh, one would notice that uh, we increased the throughput from 1,500 tons per day in the pre in the PEA to 1,800 tons a day in the pre-feasibility. Uh, and that was largely uh, accomplished through, uh, th through a larger uh, ball mill and milling uh, circuit that, that we're going to be using in the uh, restart of Bunker Hill. And we also announced this last month that we have actually acquired the uh, ball mill that is capable of achieving that increase from 1,500 to 1,800 tons a day. The nice thing is that this ball mill gives us the flexibility um, to look at further increasing throughput up to 2,100 tons a day. Now, there's still some technical work and, uh, and, and design work to do to balance the mining to uh, to support an increase from 1,800 uh, uh, up to potentially 2,100, but that's certainly a, a value creative oppor creating opportunity that we're looking at uh, uh, we're looking at as we move forward. In addition, uh, we have uh, announced and selected our uh, contract management and construction firm. And they are now on site and beginning the, to take the reins of driving the project forward through construction. In the underground, we continued the underground development and, uh, and it supplemented our fleet with some opportunistic purchases and acquisition of an uh, electric jumbo and a, an additional haul truck. We, can, we plan on continuing to opportunistically add to our fleet and the good thing is that uh, we have found that we've been able to build a fleet with, you know, a consistent, uh, a consistent equipment. Uh, so on the truck fleet, we're looking at ducks, 26 ton underground trucks with uh, an articulated or a uh, ejector bed. On the drill fleet, we're looking at using a Sandvik uh, for the drilling fleet. And on the, uh, on the excavator and the muckers, we're looking at using cat equipment. Uh, which is nice because we have a consistent equipment which allows us to focus and minimize uh, uh, warehouse inventory parts and supply spares. In addition, at Pond Array, we're well into the demolition phase and uh, that is continuing essentially on track slightly ahead of schedule and is expected to be completed in November. So really, you know, the uh, story from Bunker Hill is, a, is that the project is on track and we're continuing to advance and look for opportunities to unlock more value creation as we move forward towards uh, restarting. Uh, one of the only mines that's going to be, re to, to be coming into production in the next year in North America. So with that, I know it's a pretty quick summary, but I will turn it over to any questions that, uh, that uh, are out there and, uh, and looking forward to having a good productive September. So thank you. Oh, absolutely, Sam. Uh, because it is such a short element today, uh, I'd like to just provide a bit of time and remind uh, everyone in the audience that if you do have any questions, please ask them in the Q&A chat found on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, but Sam, maybe what's, uh, what's, what's the most exciting element uh, 
that you've just reviewed today in your opinion? Well, I, I think that you know the, uh, the, the potential value creating opportunities are really what's most exciting. You know, with the acquisition of the, a ball mill that has a larger capacity, uh, you know, certainly the ability to move from 1,500 tons a day to 1,800 tons a day is significant. Um, and, and then uh, offering us the ability to look for further expansion up to 2,100 tons a day potentially uh, as we move forward with some of the technical work is really quite exciting. That and the fact that, uh, you know, the pre-feasibility indicates strong economics on, on a restart with the measured and indicated material that we currently have uh, indicates is uh, is really exciting because what that uh, you know what that indicates is that we have significant opportunity for additional value creation through resource conversion from the inferred category into the measured and indicated category as we move forward. Okay, great. Uh, Ralph wants to know if you have enough funding to bring you into production. Uh, absolutely. So you know if uh, you know when you when you read the press release around the pre feasibility, you know the. Uh, there, you know, we still have the uh, 37 million in uh, stream financing from Sprout uh, Royalty and streaming that uh, will be coming in over the over the next couple of months. Um, you know, that represents the largest portion of the uh, uh, of the funding that re is that is required for restart. Now there is, uh, and everybody will notice this. You know, there is a, a gap in, in that funding, and what I can say right now is that there is a lot of interest in the project and we're and we are having uh, a lot of uh of active conversation around what is the uh what is the what is the best way to close that gap so we certainly expect that um and that we will be closing that gap and we will have a, a fully financed project in the very near term great a uh, member of the audience uh, in notes that they're very familiar with the Silver Valley and Bunker. Congratulations on bringing this major asset back to life. But just where is the mill located? Or rather, where is the mill location? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, the Ponderé Mill, which we uh, uh, demobilized, is now sitting in the yard at, uh, uh, at the old Bunker Hill um, mine site portal area. Um, near the Kellogg portal. Now the, the processing plant will be constructed uh, in this location. Great, okay, Michael in the audience wants to know when is Sprott going to provide funding? So Sprott has provided uh, funding in terms of the you know, royalty convertible debenture and, uh, and two subsequent convertible debentures. Uh, what's remaining in the Sprott financing package is the 37 a million dollar multi-metal stream. Now we're in the process right now of uh, doing the final uh, due diligence and technical checks and working on the final paperwork. So we expect that that final piece of the Sprott funding to uh, be released over the, you know, uh, over the coming weeks. No, absolutely, okay. Um, will the underground decline completion allow you to do toll milling before commercial production? Uh, is there any update on that? Yeah, potentially it will uh, al uh, allow us to look at pre-production revenue. And I'm glad that that question was asked because that is another difference between the PEA and the pre-feasibility study. In the PEA, we had, uh, we had anticipated and projected having toll milling in the pre-production period. Uh, in the pre-feasibility, um, you know, those conversations had not advanced to the point where where it was appropriate to include those in the pre-feasibility study. Uh, needless to say, those conversations and, uh, the, and the work required to achieve that is ongoing. Um, and, and when we have more clarity and more certainty around what that could potentially look like, we we are, we'll be very excited to share that. But it is still an option, and it is still an option that we're actively working towards. Okay, great. Uh, a registrant submitted this question. Why do you need to do demolition at Ponderé? I thought you already demobilized the mill and we're all finished. The, uh, you know, the, as part of the uh, agreement and commercial agreement with uh, the, you know, with, for the acquisition of the Ponderé mill, a component of that was the demolition of the mill buildings at, in which the mill uh, was removed from. 
So we are simply just meeting an obligation of the commercial agreement that uh, was reached with the acquisition of the mill. Okay, great. We're open the audience is another question. Um, you know, all right, best case scenario, best case scenario. Uh, how much will the mine produce and what is the potential value? Best case scenario. So um, look, the, uh, you know, the, the, the pre-feasibility, I'll, I'll start with where, you know, what the, the pre-feasibility indicates. So the pre-feasibility indicates a, a, a free cash flow of uh, around $25 million a year and an NPV of uh, uh, just over 50 million. Now that's a that's with con pre, you know fairly conservative uh, metal prices below the current spot price, uh, and again it is also limited to the uh, measured and indicated material. So, look, you know um, I, I think that uh, from I, you know I have to be somewhat careful here, but uh, but we certainly think that the ultimate value um, in, in terms of free cash flow generation per year and when and and mine life extension through uh, you know through resource conversion is going to add substantially to uh, you know the value and the value creation uh, potential at Bunker Hill, as well as some of the uh, optimization uh, opportunities that you know we're looking at. Uh, and we've spoke earlier about the opportunity for toll milling. We spoke about the opportunity for increased throughput. Uh, we do also think that there is opportunity for. Uh, recovery uh, enhancements and optimization as we move into production and uh, fine tune the uh, you know the uh, processing plant, um, and we also think that there is opportunity for uh, for significant upside leverage when when uh, through exploration we're able to bring a more uh, more silver in into the pro into the uh, mine plant and forward in the mine plant. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, Tony wants to know, will toll milling and future in-house milling be moved by truck or rail to the smelter? Uh, well, there's no, there's no rail um, spur or access in the Silver Valley. So most certainly the uh, concentrate product uh, will leave the Bunker Hill mine site uh, uh, via truck. Okay, great. Um, I think you already touched on this, um, but uh, potentially if there's any more color to add, um, feel free to do so or refer to your last answer, uh, Sam. But uh, what's the delay with Sprott freeing up the money? Uh, there actually hasn't been a delay. This is all part of, a, uh, of, of an articulated process that was outlined in the commercial uh, agreement for the full, um, for the full uh, Sprott financing package. We're, we're simply in the final stage of that. Which is the final uh, review of the uh, of the technical aspects of the mine? You know that's going well. So you know I would say that there there actually isn't any uh, um, any delay. It's happening all as was envisaged in the uh, commercial agreement with Sprott. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Michael wants to know if you have any news on uplisting on the uplisting plan to the TSXV. Um, yes, we certainly uh, intend to uh, uplist on the uh, TSXB, and we expect that to happen kind of in in conjunction with or in close proximity to the uh, uh, the stream financing coming in. Okay. Well, listen, Sam. It was short. Uh, it was sweet. Uh, but that looks like all the questions we received for today. So I want to thank you for coming on, especially uh, everyone in the audience for joining us today. Uh, and those who asked questions. But before we wrap up for the day, I'd like to hand things back to you for some closing remarks. Well, I would say I really certainly appreciate the you know the uh, the, the questions. They're all excellent questions, and uh, you know we're looking forward to you know our next monthly update. Uh, you know at the uh, at the end of the month, there's a lot of activity here on site. We're moving this project forward uh, aggressively, and uh, you know the team is hard at work here, and looking forward to sharing some of the. Uh, some of the achievements that we achieve in the month of September. So thank you all very, very much.